this is a portrait of Crazy Horse, which is kind of a difficult subject matter because there are no photographs of Crazy Horse. There's one photograph that purports to be Crazy Horse, and a lot of people support that interpretation, but most experts and scholars don't believe that it's authentic and that through the end of his life, Crazy Horse had never consented to having his photograph taken. However, he was okay with his likeness being represented, just not in a photograph. Um, he's represented in a lot of ledger art, both um, by uh, contemporaries and by um, later uh, people, later Sioux people who were recollecting things that had been passed down. We know that Crazy Horse had created representations of himself artistically. So he was not opposed to his likeness being represented, but he always did refuse to ever sit for a photograph. And so even though he had consented to having his likeness created, uh, I went a step further and got in touch with the Crazy Horse family. Those are the descendants of the, the family of Crazy Horse, who today are the caretakers of his, his estate, his, um, the, the biography that, he, that they created of him. And I described this project to them. And I've met them before and I'm on good terms with them. And I asked their permission, and they gave me their blessing to, to proceed with this. Um, they'd seen my work before and were really complimentary of it. And they even said that I had gotten things right in my, my paintings and drawings that they hadn't typically seen um, being done correctly. So I brought up to them that I would like to do this portrait. And uh, they responded with, with consent, with permission to do that. So... I'm doing this in a good way. Um, and so I feel good about having having done that, having gotten their permission. Because I know that they, they very jealously guard representations of him. Um, they're careful about making sure information that's produced pertaining to him is done accurately. Uh, things like that. So this is something that I've been working on. Uh, most of this drawing is done in, in graphite pencil. I'm using a new kind of pencil that I really like. It's the, the Faber-Castell Pit Matte pencil. Uh, I get nice blacks with it. There is still a little bit of that graphite silver sheen that comes out with it, but it's it's superior to other pencils if that's something you want to avoid. It's It's not as shiny as other graphite pencils. So I've been using that. I also use a lot of Nero pencils, uh, which have just a small amount of grease combined with the graphite that helps um, give you a rich black without as much shine. Um, so that's kind of what I've been using on this. And I'm also using um, white chalk for some of the highlights, especially some of the, uh, the really fine marks like, um, like the choker and some of the, the lines and the, the hairs, some of the, the quill work wraps that he's wearing. I've used a uh, white chalk pencil for that. And I'm, I've also used a technique where I go and um, tone the drawing with powdered graphite and then erase into it to create negative space areas so that I can control uh, the gradation of values in the drawing. And then I'm also using a pencil that's got a very loose, a very grainy point to it to color in, or not color in, but shade in some of the areas up here of the, um, the upper shirt that he's wearing because it gives kind of that leather suede texture to it. So if you were to look up close, it almost looks like, like it's stippled at times that there's um, minuscule, almost microscopic um, pointillism going on that, that that comes from the natural grain of, of that pencil. <laughs> so we do know some of what 
crazy horse looked like. He was described by eyewitnesses who knew him. Um, we knew he was under six feet tall. He wasn't a spe an especially tall person. Um, we knew he was lighter skinned than other Sioux people. And that his hair was also lighter in color and somewhat wavy. Um, we know that he had an angular, um, almost gaunt face rather than um, a rounded face. We know that his um, ceremonial hairstyle, the way that he would, would do his hair for special occasions and also for battle, is that he often would braid one side of his hair and leave the other side loose. And he didn't go into battle wearing headdresses. Uh, he was not someone that, that wore or carried large bonnets or headdresses. Instead, what he did was um, he would wear a hawk feather in his hair. And I don't show that here because it would tend to be towards the back. I've done some other paintings where I have shown it coming off towards the side. But in general, it would be worn towards from the top down towards the back. Um, he also wore a very simple necklace, just a leather uh, string, and wrapped in um, in buckskin at the at the pendant area of the necklace were some uh, sacred stones, and also the uh, the heart of an eagle. And so I have included that here, just the representation of that bundle. And we also know what kind of shirt he wore for the first part of his life. He was a member of a society known as the Shirt Wearers. And this was a special, almost a uniform style of shirt. And that's what I've portrayed him in, in, in this drawing. The, you know, the upper shirt would have like a blue design, and um, more of a yellowish down below, and with uh, red lightning stripe patterns down the, the sides here, things like that. So this was a shirt that not all men were able to wear. Um, just members of this society were able to wear it. And Crazy Horse actually lost the right to wear that shirt at one point in his life. Uh, he had made a controversial decision uh, that put him in conflict with another man named No Water. And No Water actually... Um, attacked Crazy Horse at one point and shot him in the face, point blank. And that resulted in a scar in Crazy Horse's cheek that he wore for the rest of his life. The scar and powder burns that could be seen. And it was apparently quite visible. Um, a lot of the, the people in the, in the tribe who were contemporaries of him described it. A lot of women remarked on noticing it as well. Um, they tended to provide some very detailed descriptions of, of people that they'd seen. So some of the best descriptions that we have come from other Sioux women. But he survived it. However, um, his right to wear this particular shirt was stripped of him. He lost his shirt wearer status. And in fact, the, uh, the entire shirt wearer society kind of... Um, fell out of prominence after that happened. Um, the shirts that exist today from that era are, are in museums. Um, the best known one was acquired by, uh, or through a little big man. And it's claimed to actually be Crazy Horse's shirt. There is some question about whether that is or not. It's just considered to be a shirt associated with him. Uh, we don't know for sure that that was the actual one that he wore that was then taken from him. But even if it's not, it is that style of shirt. We can see what the style was. It was there was a very uniform, very um, similar style among the shirt wearers. So some of the things that I like about Crazy Horse, like what made me want to do this depiction, is that he was not a perfect man. Um, he's considered to be such a role model. <laughs> such a hero, and yet aspects of his life that weren't perfect are well known. Um, 
the censure that he faced because of some of his conduct is part of his known biography. And um, the, the people were aware of his faults and his flaws. I don't really like perfect heroes. I'm, I'm not a perfect person. I've made so many mistakes in my own life that I'm working on. But um, I like that even though he had made some of those mistakes, he was not regarded as having no value after that. that the approach of the people to his mistakes was, this is the consequence of it. You lose this particular status among our people, but you are not an outcast. You are not despised. You are, you are not um, unwelcome among us. Like You have not lost your value to all the people. You simply have the consequences of what, what you've done. And he was then able to continue his efforts to serve the people. And he became a very great leader, very respected person. So I do, I do like that aspect of him. That, that's, that's a very hope-giving type of role model, rather than someone being a paragon, um, somebody that, that recovers, that restores themselves. Um, that's just something that I, I really admire about him. And I'm wondering if part of his refusal to be photographed comes from a sense of humility. I don't think it comes from, from an arrogance. Um, the fact that he didn't wear large bonnets and feather trailers, things like that. That his accolades, his achievements that resulted in being given those honors, um, he, he gave those away. So I, I like those things about him. Um, to me, that's a that's a different view of strength than we get from a lot of other modern heroes who have to be rugged and tough and and powerful um, like over all others and like unimpeachable um, that they cannot be questioned they they cannot be um, observed in both their moments of great strength and and personal struggle and challenge. So this is something that I really admire about him. So I wanted to show him uh, carrying that sense of confidence, carrying that sense of, of looking forward and that sense of honor as, as he's, uh, he's got a very um, assertive look on his face. And yet he's holding his pipe which is a symbol of service to the people, to others. So he's holding his pipe and he's holding his pipe bag. Um, and that it's through that, that service, through, through these types of emblems, that we see his restoration. He's known so much for being uh, a man of war, but as I've read his biography from his family, and also some of the writings of Dr. Joseph Marshall about him, we find that there's a lot more to the things that he taught and to the legacy he passed on than just heroic battle deeds. So this is kind of what I wanted to portray. And I'm going to consider this drawing to be pretty much done. I might do a few more touch-ups on some of the hands and some of the highlights, but I'm very, very happy with how this has gone. And um, thanks for watching this and letting me share some of this with you.